Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me at the start of a new campaign in the Age of Imperials and Mod for Hearts of Iron 4, in which we're led by a certain Nicholas II, who has kind of a curse upon him, but the Tsardom of Russia. Well, Russia undoubtedly began the 20th century in a rather difficult situation, which included such events as a war with Japan or the revolution in 1905. A large number of Russia's problems were also caused by Germany, through which its intelligence network supported national liberation movements in Russia. There was also great uh, uprisings of Muslims in 1916 and wars with Austria and the Ottomans. And although all these problems put together a great challenge for Russia, it turned out to be possible to overcome them. After 1905, Russia entered a series of reforms which, although it created an un uncomfortable compromise between the Tsar and the State Duma, allowed to calm the public mood. Losses in the war with the Japanese were in all way covered by the creation of the Uyghurstan and Mongolia protectorates as a result of the intervention in the Chinese Civil War. The wars with Austria and the Ottomans turned out to be much simpler than expected, and by 1916, Emperor Nicholas II had managed to win the title of Conqueror of Empires. The actions of the German agents ultimately came to nothing as a result of the reforms aimed at increasing the autonomy of the nations in the western border zone, with particular emphasis on the Poles, Latvians, Estonians, and Finns in 1920. The general situation in the Russian Empire can be said to have returned to normal and peace has returned. Unfortunately, not everything was so beautiful, despite the efforts of Nicholas II. The Russian system of a few decades was even more plunged into corruption and nepotism. The clerical apparatus of the empire turns out to be inefficient at every step, and the Russian nobility, forced to look at for a new source of income, practically fu fully filled their clerical positions in the new empire, which is one of the main reasons for such a bad thing. The situation is therefore far from perfect, but even with these kinds of problems, Russia continues its path of progress, competing with the empires of Germany and the Great Britain for world domination. The Third Realm continues, and it is the emperor's intention not to allow any need for the Fourth to arise. Long live Tsar Nicholas II, ruler of all of Russia, and we're doing the 1931 World Exhibition. The World Exhibition, which is said to be held soon, is to be the pinnacle of uh, Russia's image in the international arena. Op the opening ceremony will be honored by Emperor Nicholas II himself and assembly, a call to a crusade. When Emperor Nicholas II heard about what was happening in Mexico, mainly about the activities of the Calle's government, which openly began to persecute Christians and called himself good God's personal enemy, he was terrified. It quickly convened a meeting of the Russian government and army representatives to determine whether the Russian Empire was able to help these people in any way, and eight plans of various kinds were quickly established. Nicholas II appeared to be particularly shocked by the stance of the American and British governments on Calle's activities, for they were willing to ignore the persecution in exchange for more favorable Mexican oil contracts. Thus, such a significant deterioration in relations between the Russian Empire and the Anglosphere, and in view of the failure of the Washington Conference, it's clear that the Americans and the British are ready to support the disgraceful Mexican government by all means. Accordingly, we will do our best for Cristeros. Cool. Alright, the Cristeros government. Do you have any focus tree? Oh, yeah, they do, huh? It looks like they do. Interesting. And how about Mexico's government? They should sort of like... Time to make a choice. They sort of do. They sort of... Collaboration with gringos, huh? United States of Hispanic America. Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's actually kind of cool. Expansion of a petrochemical base. Oh, maybe I'll play with them sometime. But, uh, can we send any volunteers? Two volunteers. And I... Who do we have here? Uh, Mexico has some pretty hilly territory, so how bad are these guys? 16 come with is not bad. For the beginning of the campaign. So, there we shall go. And... How many planes can we send? Up to 60. Do we have 60 planes? Yes, we do. Uh, do we actually have 60 fighters? No, we don't. Um, that's fine. Go down to 50. Oops. And where are we going? We're going to Mexico. You, me, Mexico, and we have a cup of coffee here. Nice as well. It takes a while to go from Mexico, to, or from Russia to Mexico. See, that's interesting. And then we'll follow up with another focus called uh, Great Minds. Uh, wow, foreign, but oh, look at this. Uh, let's get the Saint or Petersburg's glamour. Many famous figures in the world of the show business have visited our capital city in connection with the world's exhibition, and we participate actively in various cultural events organized there. Thanks to them, Petersburg was was never before will gain the fame he deserves in the world. Oh. <clears throat> world exhibition, great theme, colonization. The World Exhibition, titled Great Colonization, has begun in St. Petersburg, covering the topics of the colonization and civilization of Siberia. Therefore, an especially built complex, large exhibitions have been erected, presenting various riches of Siberia, such as valuable deposits of iron ore, gold, or gems, and also, and above all, types of plants that can be cultivated there. The main aim of the exhibition is to show the great opportunities offered by the territory of Russia, beyond the Urals, of course to encourage potential foreign investors to invest their money there. A secondary goal is the generous promotion of the Russian Empire and the international arena as a modern and wealthy country. Hence, St. Petersburg was chosen as a venue for the exhibition. We've waited a long time for this moment. Nice. Anything here? Oh, we already have uh, Mikhail Alexandrovich. Oh, 
Here's a backroom backstabber. That's not good. Can we get more? Oh, oh, look at this. BP. Ooh. Uh, let's get more civvy melee construction speed for now. Um, I really love this one. We should be okay on fuel. We'll see. I love this one, though, a lot. I love the encryption and decryption oh, quite a bit. How, how are we doing our resources? We're doing pretty well. I mean, we need a little bit of rubber, but, you know, what else is new? Um, anything up here? Information propaganda. So, right now, we are Oktobritsky. We are reactionaries. Which makes sense. That's actually pretty darn good. More political power and consumer goods. Um, you know what? Just go with him. You are a reactionary. I uh, have physicians, okay. It's pretty good for month population, but nah. Intellectual. Reactionary, no. That's way too much political power loss. Uh, reactionary, it's not terrible. We get more consumer goods, which is imp just really, really important. Um, that's pretty good, too. Yeah, we'll probably go with him. And then him over there, yep. Because right now we want to build, 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 build. Oh, yeah, we're here, too. Nice. Oh, these are tanks down here. Look at that. And they're fighting monsters, so we should help destroy them faster. Ah, oh, send Zukov, because we can't run out. Dracula premieres. Dracula. Dracula. Oh, wait, what? I wanted to use Field Marshal. Whoops. Oh, well. Oh. They won. Okay, then. There you go. And then, the Russian Stock Exchange at its peak. One of the most important tasks of the World Exhibition was to show the world that Siberia, under Russian rule, turned into a place not only suitable for living, but also for extensive cultivation of the land and for the establishment of large mine complexes. Thanks to numerous investors who have traveled to St. Petersburg, interested in investing in Siberia, will soon see the effects of our years of work, wearied by, sun, by the sun. Recently, the situation in Russia has stabilized after the quite turbulent period of industrial revolution, which is undoubtedly good news for all of Russia. Unfortunately, this does not mean the end of the problems because of issues of corruption. Scandals related to the nobles' community continue to plague Tsar Nicholas II, who, in the face of the temporary break from major problems, decided to organize a great hunt in the next month on which he intends to invite his most trusted advisors and friends uh, to discuss together uh, the problems of Russia during breaks from entertainment. Russian protector of Slavs, Christianity, Old World Order, Cossacks. So using cavalry would be pretty good to do as well. We love a good little crusade, but we've got some pretty bad corruption problems here. Pretty bad, man. Pretty darn bad. Um, Minister of War I was okay. Attack and defense on core territory. That one's honestly pretty good to do. I mean, we could send more volunteers, but more war support would be pretty nice. Anyone else here? Honestly. American National Anthem? Cool. Oh, do we win? Nice. I want you guys to come up here. See what you do about that. That's so much PP. We can just get we're just throwing PP. You know, I I want to do this one so badly. I like this one a lot, but let's do something different. Uh, go with the retention's okay. Infrastructure is okay as well. Five percent. But you also get some more stability. How, how low are we on steel? And what are we on? Well, we're on free trade. Okay, we're gonna need more resources. Yeah. Hunting accident. Uh oh. The Great Hunt, organized by Tsar Nicholas II, was to serve as a cover for the deliberations carried out by the trusted officials and officers, but, unfortunately, fate decided otherwise. Namely, shortly after the start of the Second Hunt, Tsar Nicholas II, while galloping on uh, his horse, had a coughing attack, which forced him to stop and dismount from horse. When those present at the hunt gathered to check what had happened, the Tsar's scarf was covered in blood in which he had coughed out of his lungs, coughed out of his lungs to everyone's horror. It's clear now that the health of the, of the Tsar is worse than anyone anticipated, and no one knows how long he'll be able to lead Russia. Nobody can find out about this. All right, Minister of War. Uh, I go with that guy because we can. Uh, pragmatic. That's not bad. Daily command power increase is not bad. Uh, Social suffragette. Not really worth it. Population-wise, we should be okay. Attack on defense and territory. Don't really care about that. Honestly, uh, recovery rate. Daily command power increase is not bad. Stability and research speed would be pretty good, though. Conservative or liberalism? Well, we're closer to conservatism than liberalism, so. Or what do we call it? Consumer goods, that's pretty darn good. I like that a lot. Political power gain. You know, eventually political power won't really mean anything. Um, just for our time. Yeah, I want to actually go this one. The warmonger, we like that idea. And here we're going to grab what? Something about planes. Agility is always good for planes. Go with the best planes. Tanks. Um, you know what? With tanks. We have light tanks and we have mediums. There's, I want to go heavies, but there's literally no point to go heavies. Just because there's nothing for 33. We must go here and then don't go there. And then again, then again, we do start the war. You know what? Maybe we'll go with heavies. Screw it. We'll go with heavies. Get some of that. 
Let's go with heavies just because I'd spent a long time since I've actually used heavy tanks. So, yeah, we'll do that. Why not? No, don't lose, guys. Don't lose. Don't suck. Now go in. Okay, don't go in then. And since actually we're done, done down here, uh, do what you can up here, maybe. See what you can do. All right, go back in. Really bad idea, probably. There you go. Now we've got one encirclement and almost a second encirclement. Almost, not quite. Unrest in Spain, pretty normal, pretty darn normal. Hey, we overran a division. Nice. And the great minds of the scientific world in Russia. Many distinguished minds of the world have gathered for the world exhibition in Russia and seem very interested in finding sponsors willing to fund the research. Technical progress is something that will undoubtedly be useful to us. So now, can we get involved in the uh, civil war here? What do we support? We probably support the old order, right? So like these guys, this kingdom of Spain. So what do we have here that we could use to support them? Tanks? You guys kind of suck. You're literally only tanks. Holy crap. You're literally only tanks. Uh, I'm not sure if I really want to send that group. Honestly, I'd rather send these guys. Send more Mountaineers. We can only send six, right? And 129 this time. That's not bad. Go Southern, and then what else do we have here? Fighters, naval bombers, naval bombers, attack bombers. That's fine. Oh! We're almost perfect. Weapon. Let's go with. And with you, endless intrigues. Rumors about the Tsar's deteriorating health seem to be a well known fact today, and many powerful noble families have already begun to surround potential successors to the Tsar Nicholas II. These have been Tsarevich Alexei, but also his cousin George, which seem to be of special interest as they are the first in line to inherit the throne. It's worth pointing out that Nicholas II's cousins seem to be among the favorites. A great deal of intrigue seems to cover an ever larger area each day, and although Tsar Nicholas II soon rules Russian according to the official announcements of the court, his health is good. Nothing else can stop the intrigues. It's not really worth doing. Yeah, encryption is just better overall here. Uh, being, being, no one cares. Plain stuff. Plain stuff. Oh, Staff Planner? I was getting a battle plan. Naval Thera, Sub, Attack, Air. Yeah, I like the Air stuff a lot. We don't have Castle Air Superiority. Air Reformer? It's not bad. I like this one, gives you more political power. And, yeah, I like Air Superiority. Maybe next time we'll choose this one, but let's go with this one. Chief of the Navy. Naval experience gain. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how good fleet coordination positioning is. Maybe it's really good. Or just get more attack. Kolchak. Ah, that's just a Kolchak when Mazda tunes in. Oh, I didn't play as France in this mod so too. And now, Dark Clouds on the Horizon. The Royal Exhibition Rush is an amazing achievement. Unfortunately, the news from abroad regarding numerous bankruptcies in Western Europe disrupted the exalted and friendly atmosphere in St. Petersburg and the rest of Russia. An economic crisis that some believe is looming will mark the end of an era. How strong are you guys? Oh, they're pretty darn strong. Let's make sure we don't get encircled here. Please, for the love of God. There you go. You should be able to win there now. Alright, so now we're over here in Spain, too. Having probably a, just a tremendous time. Zero issues. Totally zero. Kornilov? Sure, why not? You can come over here. Uh, let's go over here. Let's see what we can do. Doing okay in southern Iberia, hopefully. Empire State Building. Very nice, Americans. Very, very nice. No excessive ideas. Okay, cool. Wait, I sent you. Mar why did I send all the Marines? God dang, I sent the wrong group. Whatever. The Marines can still figure it out, probably. You know what? Hold there. Go there instead. Did we actually win? Nice. Yep, there goes the bank. And it's going to start happening. Ooh. You guys gotta keep these guys in place. Oh. Do you response? Confusion in the free city of Trieste? Of course, of course. 
Um, why not? It's only building so much here. Nice. French veto, of course. Nice. I want you actually both to go over here because I want to kill these divisions off first. So, another success. Great, great, great. Every cloud. Oh, crap, crap, crap. <laughs> Death of the Italian King. Goodbye, Italian King. Black Friday. The Gay King of Italy. Yes, yes, yes. Heavy equipment. Well, we're going to go heavies this time, so... I want to try something different this time. Just because. One more French government collapse. Fifth time to charm. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Can we pierce them? Somewhat. Al Capone convicted. Very good. Yeah, we know a lot of air bases. Oh, there goes Habsburg Monarchy. Um, yeah, that's not going to be bad to have right now, actually. Help him out. Royal Navy's gone bankrupt. Maintains control. Oh, the Americans are here. Yeah, get out of America. Patan has seized power. What else are we going to do here, maybe? Go there? Yeah, we could try that. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't meant... <clears throat> Excuse me, I did not meant to send the Marines this direction. Since we have them here anyways. Uh, can we throw on any artillery? Do we have, what do we have in spare? We have no guns. We've got a few things of artillery. So there you go. You should have actually a little bit more power now doing that. And then we uh, improve the divisions we have here as well. Ooh, church warfare. Also, we, the AI wanted us to go mass assault. I'm like, nah. I'm not doing mass assault. I hate mass assault so much. It's difficult to use. And it's just not worth it. Oh, wait, what? Do we win? We won. Nice. So we won. Yay, we saved Mexico from itself. <clears throat> the panic 1931 enters Russia. In view of the various court intrigues and rumors about the health of Nicholas II, news from abroad about the economic crash seemed to be of little importance. That is only un truly recently, until recently, when it became impossible to ignore them any further, because the news of the collapse of the St. Petersburg Stock Exchange... <clears throat> One of the three largest stock exchanges in the world passed through the whole country like an arrow. Many people now find themselves in dis despair, as their years of work and efforts are now wasted and crowds of disgruntled workers seem to flood the streets. Oh, we get world set on fire. Holy crap, that's really bad. Oh boy. I guess we're out of consumer goods now. Oh boy. Oh my giddy aunt. Cool. Go here and go here. Oh, the gyms are there too, huh? Well, you guys are doing all right. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Can you actually win there? I kind of doubt you could. Yeah. Abraham sacrificed yesterday evening. George Mikhailovich, son of the Grand Duke Michael Alexandrovich, and Tsarevich are likely to travel together by car from St. Petersburg to Moscow to a party organized to celebrate George Mikhailovich's successful graduation. Unfortunately, all along the way, they encountered a tragic accident, as a result of which the car fell off the road and collided with a tree. Tsarevich Alexei died instantly, while his cousin died this morning in the hospital due to heavy wounds. This horrible news seems to highlight what horrible times we live in. The country is now in state of mourning. Is this the end? Pretty much. The end of Russia as we know it. And we have long live uh, Emperor Yonin the First. Although the situation in the is difficult, the coronation ceremony has to be held, and it's essential for the new emperor in his speech to encourage the impoverished people who need her so much now. Alright, so I got four divisions down there. Maybe we could come over here and actually do this instead. Go to Malaga. Check out that division, maybe. We'll see what happens. Need more air XP. Oh, we're still, oh, I guess we're done training, huh? Got a L sub Reno. Oh, crap. We're done. stuck down there. Whatever. Actually, no. Oh, yeah, we are. An act of desperation. Sir Nicholas II took extremely hard to his consciousness. The events of the last weeks, which, due to his drastically deteriorating health, made his life seem to be coming to an end. He devoted his last days, or the last days, the last days, to search for a worthy successor of inheriting the Tsar's throne, who would be able to do what he himself could not. Meanwhile, the court intrigues seem to grow stronger despite the crisis, but with the death of the most obvious candidates, they now focus on the courtesans of Tsar Nicholas II. The merry-go-round of misfortune spins more and more. In the meantime, Tsar Nicholas wrote down his will. Can I actually win there? 
unexpected end of the world exhibition. The Tsar is dead, along with the Tsar. Yesterday night in the Winter Palace uh, will be remembered for a long time. Because it was then, was then that Tsar Nicholas II died. He was surrounded by his closest family and friends until the very end when the disease left a terrible mark on the Tsar, who before his death was no longer able to get up from his bed. There was, however, another person in the Winter Palace, whose presence few expected, and namely it was Prince Iona Konstantinovich. Konstantinovich would become to the palace a month earlier at the personal invitation of the emperor. In the face of the crisis and intrigues, his presence escaped the attention of the majority, and it was he who was secretly chosen by Nicholas II as his successor. The last words spoken by Nicholas II were, Lord, save Russia and bring her peace. All our hope in Ion and Konstantinovich. Oh, so we removed this one. Remove this one, which is not bad to get rid of that, but... Oh, no, 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 we... No, no, that's not the one. We get rid of this one, okay. Oh, this is even worse. Noble, it's anarchy. Unexpected end of the world exhibition. The thundering panic in 1931 turned at Nick, uh, St. Petersburg from the center of the world attention, where crowds of rich and famous people walked the streets in connection with the world exhibition into a virtually extinct city. Investors, hearing about the threat awaiting their companies, disappeared in a panic rush. The stars of both the show business left Russia soon after became clear. The fates of the shares on the stock exchange could be tragic. The complex built for the world exhibition is now abandoned and remains a monument to a beautiful era that has apparently just passed. An auspicious coincidence. War and peace issues. Great reforms of the Russian army. Well, as much as I want to focus on that, we'll probably have to go with Russia towards the 1930s. Russia enters the 30s in a rather archaic and anarchic internal state, which many believe should be considered a rather unfortunate sign, or unfavorable sign. According to the Emperor's will, a great meeting of the leaders of Russian political parties is to be held in order to draw the Emperor's attention to Russia's most pressing problems. Um, as much as I want to kill them off, like I said earlier, uh, that's going to be kind of difficult, so. Yeah. Spain, stop attacking like crazy. There's just nowhere good to attack. I mean, I could try here and take out Madrid, but we'll see. But it's still, not very good. The world's set on fire. Noble anarchy. We're losing political power every day. God dang it. They are pushing in a little, so there is that. Oh, we can only send 100. That sucks. Emperor's coronation. Although in the face of the internal crisis manifested in many forms, the coronation was an idea criticized by some. The Emperor Ion and I personally expressed that a coronation was needed to legitimize the further efforts to combat the crisis, and the Emperor's opinion was something his subordinates had agreed with. Therefore, today at 12 o'clock, bells rang throughout Russia while in the squares of St. Petersburg. Despite the difficult economic situation, crowds came out wanting to see the new Tsar, wanting to hear a speech which was even broadcasted on the radio throughout Russia so that all Russians could hear the voice of the Emperor. The speech itself was quite short but full of charisma, which caused cheering for Ion all over the country. God save the Tsar! Uh, Colossus on clay legs. Vanishing shipments, huh? And then, oh my goodness, we have choices here. Of course, for the liberalization of the economy, our grand army requires grand industry. Empower the state Duma. Empower the Senate. Well, yep, looks like we're gonna go to here, maybe? No. No, we can't do that yet. Because uh, this is an entire focus street, it's pretty long and big, but. Um, War and Peace issues? Yeah, we're probably gonna do this. Um, the most important commanders of the Russian army have been demanding an audience of the Tsar's court for months, but due to the deteriorating health of Nicholas II, it was impossible to accept the request. Now that the new Tsar is on the throne, meeting these generals seems to be a necessity. Well, at the very least, at least, we, um, there's just so many divisions around here. Uh, only have to focus on one place here. A ball in the Soon after its coronation, Emperor Ionin decided to organize a great charity ball in Vibesk for the benefit of those affected by the economic crisis. And although the event itself was undoubtedly quite a noble gesture, it had a hidden meaning, for it is precisely in Vibesk, away from St. Petersburg, intrigues. And the Emperor gathered the most loyal military, trusted state officials, and leaders of the political parties to deliver it behind the scenes in the future of Russia without the unnecessary attention of intriguers. The most important decision of the evening, however, was to elect a new Prime Minister who would act as the Emperor's right hand in these difficult times. Also, I forgot to get the tanks. And again, we have like no military factories. We've got some, I guess, but not a lot. Through a long time advocate of reforms was elected. Liberalism. Konovalov. Huh. Conservatism. You know, I always go, or at least not always, but the past couple campaigns in Age of, Age of Empires. Age of Imperialism in his mob. I always chose like conservatives or liberals. I kind of want to go with someone else this time. Let's go with Wrangle. Or Hero. Oh, look at that. We changed our flag. 
and the Colossus on clay legs. According to all available information, the state of Russian state is deplorable. A great investigation needs to be launched, the main purpose of which will be able to find and punish those most responsible for the state of affairs. Only then it will be possible to implement reforms effectively. I wanted to come here just so we can defend. Along those of sorrows and regrets, this day, uh, for the first time in a long time, the Russian Emperor has met with the most important officers in the armed forces. During the meeting, he was accompanied by Marshal Wrangel, who was trying to introduce him to all the details of the analyses presented by the other officers, so that the situation with which the Russian army was dealing with became clear as possible. The meeting lasted all evening and night and could be summed up in short, soldiery words, but due to their vulgarities, better not to. The analyses presented to the Emperor made it clear that the Russian army was in a deplorable condition in both terms of equipment and morale. The numerous neglect of the 1920s is the cause of such a bad condition, and without quick action, the situation can get out of hand. What's the next revolution? Uh, let's do this one. Issues of poor production quality. In recent years, Russian defense plans have started losing the race more and more to the performance levels of other aspects of Russian industry. With already extensive investigation underway, it'd be wise to look at the reasons for this. On the verge of collapse, numerous meetings with important personalities of the world of Russian politics, as well as important representatives of the armed forces, created in the eyes of Emperor Ionin I, a terrible image of Russia which he had to rule, therefore, yesterday evening. A decision was made in the Emperor's office to strengthen Okhrana's power so that it would be able to conduct a wide-ranging investigation aimed not only at finding people using the current situation for their own benefit, but also for agents to conduct an analysis of Russia that would allow for mapping the reform ban needed to stabilize the country. Let the traitors tremble with fear. Issues of desertion and poor morals. Due to the protection enjoyed by members of the nobility in Russia and the apparent lack of interest on the part of Emperor Nicholas II, the Russian Empire, or really our army, has become a center of pathological behavior which by its nature is not only prevents it from effectively performing its duties, but on the contrary, pushes the Russian soldiers towards revolutionary ideals. Which we have to, I guess this is a great purge path, so. <sighs> I love purging people. As long as I'm not the one getting purged. Uh, I'll go over there because he can. It's a little bit ahead of time, but not that ahead of time. And also, we've been, I've threw on a ton of artillery here, so like two artilleries, and then more artillery. Uh, we're gonna need some engineers and stuff like that here, but whatever, we'll get there eventually. Your turn to go in. Nice. They might be entrenched, but that's okay. As long as we get more air XP, naval XP, army XP, just a lot of XP in general. Nice. <coughs> Excuse moi. Nice. Good stuff. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. Cordoba? A carousel of corruption and nepotism. Agents who enter the defense plants are quite reporting quite unusual news in their reports. About these plants, they're not so backwards and efficient as previously reports indicated. There was therefore another question about what happens then with additional military equipment that is not accounted for and sent to the army warehouses. Agents managed to find answers to them thanks to the infiltration of military plants in Moscow, and thanks to the cooperation of several loyalist manufacturers, thanks to which it was shown that a large part of the weapons produced ends up on the black market in Russia, or sent to various locations which, according to the reports of the Okhrana, probably have to be the secret HQ of terrorist organizations plotting against the Tsar's rule. Very disturbing. Issues of vanishing shipments. Russia is a large and vast country where it is sometimes diff very difficult to find lost things. And although such underestimating the mysterious disappearance may be un very unwise, it is unfortunate because it became the norm in the time of Nicholas II, however. Now this phenomenon has intensified significantly, and not only are individual supply crates disappearing, but entire rolling stock has begun to disappear as well. Oh boy. There you go. Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Nice. Go in if you can. Nice. Hey, army XP. We need... Uh, support equipment is not too bad. We can throw them on the... Since we're using them anywhere here, we want to keep using them right now. And I do want some engineers. I don't care about the cost. Get them anyways. Um, 32. Anything else for 32? Maybe not. Tanks, hardness. Uh, anything over here? Yes. Let's get this up first. Every cloud? Eh, maybe. We'll see. Um, let's concentrate our force maybe a little bit more first. If we could come down here, that'd be great. We'll see what happens. Coffee. Oh, we could try to fight over the river, but it's better to, for us to fight right here, right now. And go right there. Uh, excuse me, guys. Excuse me. No, you want to go right there. That's better. That's a lot better, actually. That's actually pretty darn good. Yeah, look at that. A couple of divisions in the circle. Not bad. Not bad, Arenos. Again, agents of Okrana amongst the soldiers. 
Agents sent to infiltrate the military community provide us with quite disturbing reports in their opinion. The atmosphere and the military itself is not as bad as assumed as average soldiers. Most of remain loyal to a cause. It's the officer cadre which is a source of problems, especially those officers related to the nobles community which seem to be extremely negative towards the current power in Russia. Interestingly, the more revolutionary the character of the garrison commanders, the better is equipped and the soldiers in it seem to be better trained. This is quite a strange and disturbing observation, which was confirmed by a large group of agents. The firing squads will have their hands full. Um, we'll just destroy our hulls. Oh, I didn't even do any of this. Oh my gosh, Russia, why is your navy so backwards? Uh, I don't want to make any of this stuff, honestly. Destroyers are okay. They're, they're fine with what they do, but eh, it's not great. Yeah, the ships are just okay. Five, and then... Dang it. Would you guys keep training, please? Give us like a day and we'll throw on some more stuff. There you go. That's literally all we needed. One day. And death charges. Which is still not very good. You're gonna get shredded super easily. Oh, you didn't, you're not even that good. Um, can you make him that? Maybe we'll focus, focus slightly on some naval stuff, maybe. We'll see how far. Maybe, I don't know what the scope of the campaign will be. I do want to invade Germany. Uh, get that one just because you're not infantry, so. I don't think they're... The Marines are not considered infantry, right? Right? I'm not really sure. There you go. Don't let them leave. Don't let them leave. And they shall die. <clears throat> Start the Great Purge. A great investigation that took place revealed not only numerous shortcomings of the military administration, but also gave us reasons to believe that there was anti tsars <coughs> conspiracy in Russia, unparalleled in its scale. Time to formulate a list of charges. Arrest the suspects and put them in the dock. The executions will have a lot of work to do. Which is okay with us. I wish we could throw more than just stuff over here, but whatever. We have an organizer. Investigators on the railroad tracks. <coughs> The banditry of Russian railways has recently become an enormous, and the power of bandit organizations have become unusually high, making it practically impossible for the Russian police to operate outside his cities. Therefore, the investigation of Kranina's agents took a very serious nature and quite quickly, with the appropriate equipment, they managed to capture several leaders of these railway gangs. Those intercepted testified that they were hired by influential people who were very interested in the contents of these transports. Although we did not know the identity of these people, the information that the bandits received clearly indicates that their tenants must have connections with some higher officials. Whoever they are, they won't escape us. Uh, private hands, huh? Putting the military or administration in order. It's time to make Marshal Rangel's army reform projects a reality. Brave New World. How are you losing this much organization this quickly? Yeah, the, the uh, these Spanish, is it the Republic of Spain, not doing well right now, which is awesome. Well, let's see what we can get some, some big ships. We like big ships, and I cannot lie. Oh, good. There you go. Yeah, that's fine. There you go. Yep, just making these guys better, better, better. I guess we're going to use Marines quite a bit in this campaign. And I'm going to forget about them in probably half an hour. <laughs> Alright, land doctors are still coming along, which is nice. Get some cruiser holes. Destroyers are nice and all, but formulating an in indictment. The uh, work of the investigative commission has been significantly intensified. As more and more reports have been poured in and on their basis, the conclusion has been drawn that all misfortunes that recently faced Russia regarding the internal situation are responsible of huge conspiracy organized by the aristocrats who are dissatisfied with the Tsar's power and, in their envy and stupidity, would support the various revolutionary circles in Russia in order to lead a coup, and perhaps even a revolution in order to achieve their oligarchic ambitions. Emperor Ion I was actively interested in the work of the investigative commission and the awareness of the threats he was led he was in led him to issue a declaration about the beginning of the purge, the Great Purge, Trouble Days. Oh boy. Okay, it's a little better. anti tsars conspirators. A proposal from our Balkan friends today begins with very good news that comes from Yugoslavia. Namely, the government expressed a desire to join our alliance. The answer is clear. No. 
shooting deserters and revolutionaries, let's transfer military factories and private hands first. Private factories, or military factories, run by the state, have unfortunately become a place of Russian corruption and nepotism. Therefore, it would be wise to carry a partial privatization and cut, aimed at cutting off the existing managers of these factories from their influence and to check whether it is possible to increase their efficiency. Nice. For plenty of motorized, we need more guns. Light tanks are not too bad either right now. Which we'll keep because we I like doing uh light tank recon, so. There you go. If you can slither on around over here, that'd be great as well. Awesome. Tarzan, the eight man appearance, cool. One v one. Mexico wants to join the Soyuz. Nikki, the Mexican Civil War ended in a victory for the Christian rebels against the godless dictatorship of Calles. Thanks to our help, among others, this is undoubtedly one of the main reasons why the Mexican government sent us a declaration or delegation asking if they could join an alliance. Nope. Oh wait, did I actually click that wrong? Oh, I did click that wrong. My bad. Let me go get them. Real quick, once again. The sound of gunfire and rushing trains, the organization of the Russian railways, was changed in accordance with the will of Marshal Wrangel. The responsibility for the safety of trains crossing railroad tracks was taken over by the Russian army. Therefore, it became possible to organize great actions to track down and destroy all kinds of robber groups marauding in Russia. <coughs> the reports presented to the emperor cheered to him at the number of captured leaders of these criminal groups, although the loss of Siskis filled him with regret. The fight against the bandits will continue for a while and seems like it'll be quite bloody. Victims of previous previous years' neglect. Nice. Transfer of these guys, too. Um, so we're going to read this one. Please go right ahead. But we are going to go and do this one, too. Shooting deserters and revolutionaries. The consent of the consent of the Emperor Ion I of Krana. It will be expanded and be, uh, begin to play the role of supporting the current military police. The main goal of Krana's officers will be to maintain high morale of soldiers and the correct political orientation. We cannot afford a revolutionary thought to corrupt the Russian army. <coughs> Oh, my apologies for all my coughing. I don't mean to cough that much, but sometimes it just happens, you know. Cool. And these guys are now encircled almost. Come on. Come on. Nice. There we go. Oh, no, you don't. There we go. Now that's pretty nice. One, two, well, three, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, darn it. I got to go down here, too. It's fine. Keep going. There we go. So it's four, six divisions in total. Nice. It's good. New way of managing defense production. Oh, come on, guys. Seriously. Reports on the conditions of arms industry as well as uh, the rather disturbing atmosphere around the situation in the armament railways have made securing these manufacturing plants a priority. Therefore, a plan was developed to transfer the factories into the hands of private entrepreneurs associated with the loyalist camps in order to ensure that smuggling was put to an end. In the future, when the situation returns fully under our control, it will be decided what to do next with these factories. As for today, we only need the loyalty that is responsible for them. Loyalty is a secret commodity these days. And then the great process of parasites of Russian people. Uh, the news that has been spreading around Russia for the past few months is truly shocking. Crowds of Russians spontaneously organized demonstrations to show support for the actions related to the Great Purge. They want the guilty blood, and they will get it. Bloodied and battered. There we go. Immediately start going in. There we go. Look at that. Nice. Kill them all off. Even those German divisions need to die. There we go. Nice. Now we're making some good headway into Spain. Actually, I don't want to go that way. I want to go over here. Oh, look, that's pretty good, too. Go right there. I'll have you guys go right there, too. Airplane catapults. Get some of that, too, because you can. There you go. Go ahead on in. Kill off that American division too. They took back Madrid, but it doesn't really matter, honestly. It really does not matter. Oh, they're up here too. Ooh, we got in circle. That is not ideal. Um, go over here. I'll start sniping things around here and there. Overall, I think we're doing pretty okay here. Oh, not bad. 
Another division dies, bloody processes. Coordinated action of loyal troops and specially equipped and trained units of Okrana led to the extinction of revolutionary fires in the Russian army and the capture of a large number of officers with clearly anti tsarist views, many of which did not give up so easily. And in some garrisons, they opened fire the first set of Okrana's officer column, which led to the emergence of quite bloody skirmishes. People who decided to take such desperate actions usually committed suicide, which hinders the further course of the investigation. Nevertheless, the risk of a wide revolt inside the Russian army has been significantly reduced, and as soon as new loyal officers and supplies reach the garrisons, the situation should normalize. Not bad. So after that one, we should be able to do stuff here. Let's maybe do beautiful era, air force decisions. It's probably naval stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's do the army first, maybe. Land force is probably going to be super, 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 super important. Ooh, we get more stuff to that. How about that? That's not bad, too. Power of the Senate. Well, let's go do oh, Master Puppets. Look at that. The period of crisis that had damaged so Nikki's uh, readiness to fulfill their main goal, which is maintaining the world old order in Europe and the world. Now the situation has improved, which ensure that her allies are able to fulfill the commitments. Dark clouds are gathering on the horizon. Yeah, cool. Oh, wow, look at that. Hold on, let's make sure we get Madrid. For realsies. Wait, what? No, no, no. You take Madrid. There you go. I'm not sure why we're all extending it all the way up this way. Oh, that's fine too. Um, get that stuff, get that stuff, get that stuff. Some batteries. Because there's a lot of loss all campaign. I'm not even sure we'll use the Navy that much at all. So we'll see. Drive it that way too. Can you just tell them to go. We got a lot of army XP now. Look at that. Wow. Pretty nice. Save them. Oh, wow. That's a lot of divisions, they're not going to lie. That is a lot of divisions. Also, end of the Mafia. All right, goodbye, Mafia. End of the Great Purge. And the courts across Russia. The courtrooms have been crammed over the last months with the defendants, Okran's agents, newsreels, workers, journalists, and intrigued onlookers. Most of the trials end in a similar way, <clears throat> i.e., the accused were declared guilty of high treason and sentence, depending on the circumstances, to long term hard labor in Siberia or the death penalty by hanging. And although the joy of the crowds of the news of the punishments may met by representatives of the aristocracy or their high ranking state officials might not be necessarily be caused by patriotic commitments, and nevertheless called Russian citizens to become much more sympathetic for Emperor Aeon I's rule. And many people compare his actions towards the nobility to Ivan the Terrible in an overwhelmingly positive sense. So there's some stability. We get way more political power. <clears throat> Purges come to an end. Yay! Time to put away the Mosin Nagant. Oh, I can't do this stuff yet. Oh, okay. So now we're forced to go down this way. Empower the State Duma. We can empower the Senate, huh? Regionous autonomies. Ooh. Autocracy. Well, maybe we'll do this one first instead, because our land forces are really, really important for us. The Russian army is significantly weakened after the purge. We should organize large military maneuvers to assess the state of readiness of our army and to facilitate further plans for its development. Then we'll come back over here and empower the Senate. For far too long, the Senate remained a body serving essentially for the unknown, and from now on it should include the most influential and significant people in the state, enabling the Emperor to make decisions efficiently and quickly based on their opinion. Which we do lose some political power, which sucks, but whatever. Now he's in 42, huh? Um, you guys are struggling definitely around here a little bit. But that's okay. A little bit more of a struggle doesn't hurt us. And honestly, we're going to need as much political power here. Our army XP as possible, so. Passive sonar. Got some of that too. Oh, that group died. Petan. Not bad. Basic armor cruiser scheme. Cool. We got those two. That'll be fine. I'll oh, grab this one too. And then we'll be done with all of the naval stuff for now. Alright, so now we're not really winning anywhere here. So let's do this. I want to come back to the south. I like the southern portion a little bit more. Actually, no, screw it. Come down here. Southern Spain. Wow, we have no PP. Alright, so with that one done, let's go back over here. Uh, I want to power the Senate. Can we get more political power here? Anywhere here? Equal among equals? No. No, we don't. Factory Pierce speed is pretty good. Just as Peter the Great wanted. It's not terrible. Uh, what's over here? Things make a bang.
Ooh. Oh, okay, 10 regular divisions, huh? Not bad. Oh, we removed Cossacks to the leader of the world. Cavalry. Cossacks, heritage, and glory. Mechanized. Oh, you get more political power as well. Build a sniper cult. That's kind of cool. Uh, beautiful area in the development of Russian aviation. Russian aviation has been at the forefront of world aviation for over 20 years. Numerous successes of her designers at international aviation exhibitions and her aviators at various air shows have led to this calling this time the beautiful era of Russian aviation. Let us hope that despite the crisis, we'll be able to maintain her current reputation. As right, so with all that stuff done, it's still only 32. So, air doctrine? No, we have a lot of tactical bombers. Let's go with that one first. Oh, you guys are down here. Anti German moves in Poland. Well, I mean, what else is new? We do that. That'd be great. Question of the 1936 Olympics. In view of all the events that have happened over the past year, the Olympic Games that are be held in Russia in 36 have become almost completely forgotten. Lately, however, the Olympic Committee sent us a delegation to ensure that the, the Games are going to be conducted, and right now they await a reply. Because certainly, it would be understandable on our part to cancel the organization of the sporting event, and it would be understood in the face of how difficult the situation is in our country and the world it is. However, despite this, this is also a possibility of finding funds for the Olympics from an alternative source, as a number of the defendants in the recent trials were almost record-breaking. And many of them may come from rather wealthy families. Will take place. Only a barbarians would take such steps. A symptom of higher justice. Winter games in Russia and summer games. Oh, this this sounds this sounds not scarily, but like weirdly prophetic that we do this. I don't want to lose any more stability though. Hmm. Finding funds from alternative resources or sources. Try it. Nice. There you go. Aviation first. Paratroopers. Uh, the difficult issue of the Russian fleet. The Russian fleet is in a difficult position, and it's impossible to deny this fact. We must try to prepare it as well as for the challenges ahead. Come crashing down on them, please. Thank you very much. I don't know what's up with the British and just having just like artillery only divisions. No, they're not. They just stack so much fat arty in there. It's not even funny. Like, so much arty. Ah. Uh, ah, oh, we still have no consumer goods. God dang it. Well, enough of that. Uh, of course, for the liberalization of the economy, versus our Grand Army requires Grand Industry. Well, we are going integralist, so we might as well go with this one. The Grand Army requires Grand Industry. The free market in Russia has led to great abuses and caused many people to live in dire poverty. But thanks to the upcoming economic expansion program, the Russians will finally be on the first on their feet, and the Russian army will gain much-needed industrial facilities. Nice. Wow, consumer goods. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Statism, huh? Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, everyone. So this is not this is not where we left off, but I've already gone ahead and done a few more of the plans, such as expansion of farming communities. If we want to prevent future famines, it would be a reasonable solution to resume supports for agricultural banks, of which Emperor Nicholas II was a significant patron. Thanks to the activities, it would be possible to accelerate the expansion and modernization of the Russian agricultural industry. Extensive urbanization. The cities of Russia need to be significantly expanded so that they are able to accommodate much more inhabitants and industry in themselves. As a result, key points on the map of Russian industry will be significantly strengthened. The Trans-Russian Railway Expansion Program. Moving around Russia can be quite burdensome, but still the process could be greatly facilitated by the expansion of the nationwide network of railway tracks. This investment will cost us considerable costs, but there are way too many advantages to worry about. And then improving the military infrastructure. The expansion of the railway ne uh, network of railway tracks makes it much easier for civilians to move around the country, but also for our divisions. If, then, if in the future we need to move our armies from one end of the country to the other again, we will of course be ready for it. And then increase control over the central bank. The central bank has uh, too important a function to be able to remain as an autonomous body of our state. All his decisions, or these decisions, must be approved by the government and, of course, the emperor. So they're anything the position of the charitable organizations. Thanks to the activity of the cadet party. Uh, since the beginning of the century, there's been a significant increase or, uh, in charitable activities in Russia, helping basically every group of society. Veterans of the wars with Austrians and the Ottomans, whose reintegration into society were undertaken by those charitable organizations, have a particularly good opinion about charity actions. And then, uh, start of the five-year plan. The achievements of the great program of economic expansion have been baptized as, the, of course, the five-year plan. Although it should be emphasized that it'll take l less time to complete. 
what is not done, of course, for propaganda, in which we remove the uh, great program of economic expansion, which is very, very good. And then we'll probably go ahead and maybe do a few more. Oh, look at this. Absolutely ready for war. We lose quite a bit of our attention. Get more research speed, efficiency, growth, factory output, doctored up, and a lot more military factories, which we could absolutely use right now. Uh, what is this one? Putting an end to this one? Yeah, we could do one. Maximizing profits from the alcohol monopoly. Well, we'll probably go and do this one as well. Let's do the maximizing profits from the alcohol monopoly. Yay! Well, this is morally uh, doubtful. Maintaining a monopoly on alcohol seems to be a bring unimaginable gains to our treasure of the state. Maintaining a monopoly on alcohol enables us to do many good things, of course, in the future. And maybe we'll also do... Ooh, that's not bad. Funding research complex. It would be nice to get another thing there. As much as I want to do this one... Yeah, I don't think we can do that one when we do the other stuff, which is fine. World leader in raw materials. We'll probably end up doing something else. Well, a stable basis for military needs. Thanks to our achievements in recent years, Russia has gotten back on its feet, and every potential enemy is now sure that the war with us will be something they simply cannot be won. But I think we'll conclude today's episode there, and I might be able to finish this off screen. We'll see what happens with the Spanish Civil War, but at least we won in Mexico, right? But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out the, my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already, and I will see you tomorrow, as we will see what happens, especially once people start getting really angry with each other and want to kill each other like normal. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great rest of your day.